We all have our definition of sustainability and of how we practice it in our lives. And when it comes to seafood sustainability, in my conversations with people, it is about not overfishing, and it is about preserving the world's fish populations. But there is another aspect of seafood sustainability, and that has become a part of my mission. And my little buddy over here has been integral to that mission. I will leave you in suspense for the formal introduction. So my mission, it started when I was young, really. I, fortunately, was born and raised in beautiful Alaska, where I grew up with and loved having fish for dinner. And salmon ran through my veins. And then in college, at the University of Florida, I found myself in a doctoral research program in which I was looking at how to better use underutilized sources of seafood. So what are these underutilized sources of seafood? Well, it can be the cutoffs or trimmings after you fillet a fish. It can be that good fish meat that's left on the bone after processing. It can be bycatch. Let me give you a few examples. Shrimp. They are not the only things caught in shrimp nets. There can be fish in there, too. What do you do with those? And then, at the end of the day, there may be fish in your nets that you did not intend to catch. What do you do with those fish? And let's not forget the small species of fish, the sardines and herrings. We can better use them, too. So really, if you think about it, all of these underutilized Sources of seafood are like the bread and bagels that you might throw out at the end of the day, or that ugly potato or carrot. It's all usable, it's all nutritious, and it's all good food that we can eat. So to put all of this in perspective, recent numbers show that 88 percent of the 171 million tons of global fish production is directed towards human consumption. That is fish for us. And only about 20 percent of that fish that we catch ends up in our stomachs after harvesting, processing, distribution, and reaching the consumer. So clearly, we have an amazing and an exciting opportunity to improve how we use our seafood and improve how we use our leftovers and reduce food waste. So this opportunity, it turned into a doctorate and an enormous passion for those cute little herrings and those fish trimmings. And whoa, now I had the tools and know-how to create value-added raw materials for us to eat. Fishmints, like ground beef, from that, you can make fish patties and fish fingers. You can make seafood products, like imitation crab meat. That imitation crab meat is what we commonly see in our sushi rolls. That imitation crab meat is actually made with fish, specifically Alaska pollock. 
So now where am I? I am in beautiful Iceland, where Alaskan lupin grows. And I only live a few degrees latitude difference from where I grew up in Nikiski, Alaska. And what do I do several years later after working with various food ingredients in the food industry? I am back working with seafood raw materials. And it gets even better. I am 3D printing those seafood raw materials. Yes, 3D printing. Imagine you have a copier or an inkjet printer. It prints in one dimension on a piece of paper. Now, imagine that that ink is fish. And now, not only are you printing in one dimension, but you are printing layer upon layer, neatly stacked up on top of one another. And just like there's font sizes, there are nozzle sizes, such that you can create various food forms. Now, I must tell you, my initial impressions and thoughts of the food printer were not so positive. My husband and I, we are both food scientists, by the way, we were having an interesting discussion. Okay, let me be honest, it was actually a lively debate. I thought that this was as far away from natural as you could possibly get. I thought of overly processed foods and dried down ingredients that you then reconstitute and print. But then there was an intervention. Holly met technological disruptive reality. At that point, I had to radically change and transform in my mind what I thought sustainability could be and will be. I came to adopt and realize that the 3D food printer can be used as a tool in which you can use those sustainable, raw, healthy ingredients. You can use those fish trimmings or that ugly potato. My mission went 3D, literally. And now the new headline of the mission, Seafood Sustainability and Technology Meet the Future Kitchen. It is with projects like Future Fish, where experts and collaborators in the 3D food printing industry, the seafood industry, institutions, and chefs, we are all coming together. And we are 3D printing formulations made with underutilized seafood raw materials. And it goes so much deeper. We are taking traditional protein sources and we are applying them in novel ways such that we can get consumers to eat more fish, be more engaged with their food, and communicate sustainability to the masses. We are using a tech technological disruptive tool, and we are applying it to a mostly traditional industry. We are creating different food forms from the traditional Icelandic cod and potatoes in the form of volcanoes with spinach. We are creating fish pasta 
which by the way, this was the first time I ever made pasta, and it turned out very well. We are making fish pizza and pretzels and protein shells and twisted stars. And to take it even further, we are working on ready-to-print formulations such that consumers can prepare, print, and cook fish in a fun and easy way. In a sense, it's a foolproof way to get people to eat fish such that they will want to eat it again. And children, they are picky eaters, right? We'll use those fish trimmings or leftovers and print the next new novel tuna fish sandwich or cod fish fingers or smiley face. It can't get any better than that. Sustainability really should be a conversation that takes on different forms. And we are tangibly doing that right here, right now. We can do this. So I recently had a conversation with a high school student. And we talked about the realities of today and tools of tomorrow. And she was very interested in Project Future Fish. And then we went on to talk about the essay she was writing. Does Star Trek predict the future? Now, we may not be implementing the technologies of Star Trek today, like the food replicator. But we are getting closer. And there is hope that we can move towards our own version of Star Trek, in which we are using new tools to feed future populations, and such that we still have fish for dinner. So. Sustainable seafood, 3D printed, really? Yes. <laughs> and never before did I think that that fish I grew up loving so much as a child in Alaska would mean so much more, and that I would be on this exciting, sustainable journey I am so passionate about. We all have our definition of sustainability, but we must educate each other, stubborn we may be, to evolve and change with new tools and a voice. So tonight, Think about serving your dinner with a twist. And print those fish trimmings or leftovers. And welcome yourself to the new food frontier.